everybody, this is Mark Smith uh, from cleanconnect.ai and also host of Digital Roughnecks. And today we're going to go over my EPA cheat sheet, which is a summary of the new regulations that just came out, the new draft uh, in November 2022 called EPA Quad B, C, and Appendix K. <clears throat> now, this is an overall table of contents. And uh, if you are watching this um, at epacheatsheet.com, there's a button below where you can actually get the cheat sheet. If you're not there, you can head on over to epacheatsheet.com and get your own copy of this 16-page cheat sheet. Now, what is this? Okay, so uh, November 8, 2022, EPA released an update to their proposed Quad OB, C, and Appendix K. The cheat sheet, um, basically summarizes 1,438 pages into this 16-page uh, document. Now, I have a disclaimer here saying that it's for educational purposes only. I'm not an attorney. My goal is to help operators and environmental consultants understand what's in the new regs. So <clears throat> the first part is the cheat sheet where I compare these four columns, Quado A, Quad OB, which is new sites after 11, 15, 2021. Quad OC, which is sites built on or before November 15, 2021, or the Colorado current regs. Why I put Colorado in is because uh, Colorado is generally considered to be one of the toughest uh, areas of enforcement. And also, Colorado has really become the R&D lab for the EPA. So a lot of these things you're seeing now have been implemented in Colorado for a while. Okay, so it's a it's a good sort of benchmark to see. So this chart goes through a number of things right here, are the three columns, and it applies to any site that generates more than three tons per year of methane. What you're going to find overall is that pretty much everything in C is in B. Okay, so this applies to pretty much all your sites. Now, a uh, big idea, <clears throat> the frequency of LDAR has increased from every six months to quarterly. Uh, again, in Colorado, it's monthly. There is now requirements for monitoring during pre-production. Okay, so they want you to recover gas and liquids during pre-production, separator required. Um, like in Colorado, you've got to do continuous uh, VOC monitoring through the first six months of production. Um, <clears throat> Then uh, OGI really has become the best system of emission reduction. And then normal uh, leak definition has some, some change here. But really there's some, the thing I wanna point out here is a super emitter event. And I have a whole slide on that that I'm gonna go over. And uh, on the next page here, we have uh, new rules about monitoring of centrifugal compressors, um, the you know, uh, gas processing plant frequency. Now um, use the Appendix K, which I have another slide on. Um, and uh, on Quad OC, you're now required to replace your natural gas pneumatics with zero emitting devices. Uh, there's new requirements here for liquid loadouts. Okay, so um, for example, like in Colorado, you have to do visual loadout observation. Um, you're not quite as clear here, but basically all your loadouts have to be at zero emissions. There has to be a tank battery monitoring. And uh, basically you have to have combustors on, on everything. There, there is a new sort of uh, methane intensity, which I'll get into on the reporting side. Okay, the super emitter events. So that's when there's a 100 kilogram per hour emission event. Now you could get a notice from a third party. It could be a satellite could be a plane, mobile detection. And by day five, you are supposed to figure out the root cause of it. And you can determine that with OGI or method 21. And then by day 10, fixing the problem. And they list three common problems that they anticipate. Cold venting, tanks, pressure relief valve opening, thief staff opening. And then by day 15, you have to report back to the EPA the problem and the solution. And if you can't prove that it wasn't you, then the event will be listed on their new super emitter website. Appendix K is something that changed between draft one and two, and now only applies to gas processing plant. And what it does is it really specifies how you do the inspections. So like um, your dwell times, the 10 second recording for leaks, 
Delta T requirements and so on and so forth. And then LDAR training. Um, they have this concept of a senior operator and a junior operator with minimum requirements. Um, mission inventory 2.0. The big idea is you still have your bottoms up emissions inventory, but um, some people are already using the LDAR report to prove your leak uh, duration. Okay, so the shorter your reporting period, the shorter potentially of the um, duration of a leak. Um, <clears throat> they talk about methane intensity, but in order for you to do methane intensity, you're going to have to measure your throughput and provide that because methane intensity is, you know, by site. Uh, Colorado Reg 22 is a good example of this where they have a CO2E intensity, um, but it's per site. Similar to OGMP 2.0 and others, you know, there's this idea of reconciling top down and bottoms up. Okay, so this is kind of where things are headed. Um, <clears throat> one thing is they have different methane intensity numbers, you know, 0 0.2 for upstream, 0 0.11, 0 0.05. The big idea is that if you're producing at or below that, there is no tax. And here's the tax amounts. There's also a clause in the Inflation Reduction Act that says if you meet quad O, B, and C, um, you can avoid paying the tax. But the language is a little loose, so it's one of those things that's still out there, even if you meet B and C. Um, <clears throat> what I wanted to show you, because there's a big, going to be a big increase in manual LDAR, right? Um, I did some back of the <clears throat> envelope calculations, and you know the amount of overall LDAR, the people getting in trucks and going out with their manual, is going to increase substantially with these new rules. So <clears throat> Clean Connect has created autonomous LDAR, and we got approval from Colorado that we had to go through to prove that we could do autonomous LDAR. So we had to do source level leak detection, blind testing, equivalency using um, LDAR SIM, and that was equivalency of monthly manual LDAR, not even quarterly. <clears throat> we had to prove an alternative work practice um, that will allow people to remotely uh, monitor and um, in many cases even fix problems. Uh, we had a couple of operators endorse it and we're currently going through EPA approval. Now this chart goes to what you have to do manually using Appendix K versus doing it autonomously. Um, in short, basically the autonomous LDAR meets every one of the Appendix K requirements and does it automatically. Okay. But the big idea there with autonomous LDAR is that you're not sending people out to a site. You can remotely uh, monitor, diagnose problems, and in many cases even fix problems um, without going out to the site. So the impact of quad O, B, and C. All right, I think the number one is going to be staffing and call out. Again, I do some math on there, but the number of people that are going to be in trucks going out to sites is going to be millions more, okay? Um, schedule inspections. <clears throat> um, the retrofits by replacing gas power pneumatics on every existing site, that's going to cost the industry millions. The new enforcement with super emitter is going to be a new thing that you should be aware of, right? Um, because now they have an easier way to enforce using satellites, for example. And the reporting requirements uh, with that potential of a methane tax if you and again, you can avoid it for now for B, B C, but uh, it, it's hanging out there. So with that, um, I'm offering a you know 101 strategy session, you know where we can talk about your current LDAR program, and uh, can see help you identify any gaps, and we can discuss autonomous LDAR, see if it might be a good fit for your organization. So with that, I thank you, and uh, I look forward to getting any questions you might have.